temperatures are going up, it's the beginning of storm season, and authorities are warning of rolling power outages possibly this summer. What can you do to prepare now? A lack of power may be more than an inconvenience to some people. To some, it may even be life-threatening. In this video, we're gonna share the reasons that the experts are predicting power outages this summer. Then we're gonna give you some practical, common sense ways that you can keep cool, keep calm, and cook during a power emergency. Hey, if this is the first time you've joined us, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. Now this video, we should mention as we get started, is part two in this series. On Monday, we dropped the first video where we talked exclusively about possibilities for backup power sources. So we're gonna make sure that that video is linked in the description of this video. So when you're done with this one, you can head over there and watch part one. We received some questions from under the median viewers about exactly where these rolling power outages are predicted to occur in the United States this summer. So here is a photo. This is a widely circulated map of the United States. And as you can see, it's approximately half of the states in the United States that may be experiencing power outages periodically this summer. You know, when demand for power outstrips the ability for the grid mm -hmm. to supply it, then the power companies are going to put in these rolling blackouts. Now, mm -hmm. some are saying they may only be for 15 minutes, but they might be longer. And of course, the other reason for blackouts during the summer are our summer storms. A few of the storms may be strong or locally severe, with brief wind gusts to around 60 miles per hour. A tornado or two is also possible. High winds, of course, impact the trees, and that usually causes the outages as tree branches come across the power lines and take them down. So for these reasons, we are gonna go through some things that you can do to help prepare and be ready in the case of a power outage. On Monday, we put out a video on backup power sources. There's so many different ones. We just covered the ones that Hope and I use, and that would be like U.S. battery banks. We covered AGM batteries. We also talked about portable power stations. We even talked about any loop batteries that you can put in your flashlights, your emergency radios, and those kind of things. So those are all really good to have on hand. And of course, if you need a larger amount of power, then we talked about our gas generator. You can also get a Generac power supply, which will actually run off of natural gas. That's a big unit that sits in your backyard. It automatically comes on when the power is out, and that'll supply power to everything you have in your house, including your AC. So those, those are very expensive to put in. Hope and I do not happen to own one of those. Now, if you want to hear Larry go in depth and totally geek out about backup power sources, this has been a passion of his for a really long time. You'll wanna watch part one of this series. Watch it after you're done with this one. But there are a couple of tips, really important ones actually, that we didn't mention in that video that we wanna cover in regards to backup power sources. One of the most important things that you need to consider when you're trying to get backup power is how much power does each item in your household consume? Well, one way to really know that is by using a kilowatt meter. This is a meter that measures the wattage. It also measures amps and volts out of your line current. You plug an item in here and it'll tell you the power consumption. And that will tell you whether you have enough power in your emergency backup to supply for that item. This is literally one of the favorite things that we own in our home. We use this all the time. Uh, the first time we ever used one though, we borrowed it from our public library. So look around, check and see if your library actually has one of these on hand that you can borrow before you buy one. If you wanna buy one, they're under 40 bucks. Anything we mention uh, in this video, all the products, we're gonna have links to them in the description of this video. I do wanna mention another thing, especially about gas generators. You wanna make sure that those are maintained, the oil's changed, you got air filters in them, they do take some maintenance, it's a gas motor, it's just about like your lawnmower. Your lawnmower needs maintenance and this is the same thing. You also wanna make sure that you have enough gas on hand if you're in a power situation, make sure that tank is filled and do regular maintenance, have the oil changed. It'll tell you in the owner's manual how often that should be changed. It has to do with how many hours that you run that item. 
In addition to doing regular maintenance, there's something else that you should be doing with all of these items, and that is getting them out periodically and making sure that you use them, that you know how they work and how they're gonna perform for you. You wanna have those systems in place before the emergency. Waiting until you're in the middle of an emergency is not the time to buy them. The stores will sell out and you won't be able to get one. That happened in the Texas power outage uh, that they occurred because of their grid problems just about a little over a year ago. We have several viewers with us from Texas who actually went through that weather-related emergency and they all report they learned a whole lot during that emergency on how to prepare for emergency blackout situations. After that really quick review and those couple of important notes that we needed to add, we're gonna roll right into how to keep comfortable and cool during a summer power outage. But before we do that, we wanna remind you that if you're enjoying this video and these tips are helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with others. That does help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not a regular subscriber to Under the Median, this is a great time to subscribe and hit that bell notification button. All right how to keep comfortable. Let's talk about some things that you can do just to keep comfortable during warm temperatures when you may not have AC mm -hmm. running. The first thing you might consider is dressing in light, loose-fitting clothing. Cotton is really best, guys. Cotton will wick that moisture away from your skin. The other thing you might wanna do is just get a like a hand towel and lightly dampen it, and then you can put it around your neck. That's gonna keep you cooler. Uh, you can take a spray mister. Get one of those sprayers that will go to a fine mist. Mist your arms, mist your chest area, mist your legs, and then just let the water naturally evaporate off of your body. You can use a portable power station to run fans. Anytime you have air circulating, that's a good thing. They also make fans that are USB, they are rechargeable. And we were at Menards, Larry spied one and he goes, hey, <laughs> let's buy this to show it to them on the video. So we rolled some B-roll for you to show you we did an unboxing. We were at Menards literally like five minutes ago. Larry spotted this in the fan aisle. Now he's been doing research on fans which are rechargeable with USB inputs and it was $25. We literally have no idea whether we just <laughs> struck the mother load of gold <laughs> in a rechargeable fan or if this is cheap junk. So we are going to unbox it for you now. Can I say that this was a total impulse <laughs> buy? <laughs> yes, it was. After we tell you guys never to make impulse buys, we made one, but we made it on your behalf. Yes, yes. Right. this is all for you. The things we do to sacrifice. So These are the things we do for you. So your guys are gonna get to see it at the same time I have no idea. that yeah. we do. I will say this box feels very lightweight. Should I read some on the box? Rechargeable <laughs> USB desk fan use anywhere with or without a computer? That's what it says. Why would you need a computer? We, we really, it really says <laughs> that, it folks. Says. We can't move it any closer to the camera because somehow our camera will Four focus. speeds? Oh my gosh, it has four speeds. I had no idea. I My car has six speeds. Okay, there's, there's the USB, USB. Okay. cord. Wow, it's got an owner's manual. Oh, this that, could okay. All right, that could be fun. So there's the owner's manual. It's a big look at that. Wow, <laughs> multi-page. Oh How are you supposed to get this thing off of here? I don't know, but the <laughs> but the owner's manual is bigger than the fan. The mystery four speeds, rechargeable, runs up to twenty hours. So that oh, I'm going to move this box so and that it said, can get our attention. Now we are going a little outside of its intended use because it says this is a desk fan, but we're putting it on a table. Just it's all just good. So you it's know. all good. Adjustable tilt angle USB port for phone charging includes lithium ion battery, seriously, and USB power cord. That okay. tilts, man. Look at All that. Right. Wow. Okay, are you ready? Is that high? No, that's low. That's low. Okay. Wait, watch our hair. Let's see if it. Okay, well, you know what? It's not it's, too bad. It's putting a breeze. Wow, we're on oh three. my gosh, it's not bad, you guys. I totally expected it. Like, actually, look at that. It's look actually at, moving some. Look, look at, at hair. Look at hope. Look, look at hope. Look it's at that. actually moving some air. And, I put it on high. Now it's on high. Wow. Okay. 
This is a good fan. I'm going to eat my words, you guys. It is far more powerful than I thought it would be. It's very compact. And, and you know what? You can charge off of this. It has a USB out and an in. Wow. There you, you go. All right. So our $25 splurge did indeed. Apparently, apparently it was like the the fan this that is, is my the fan, fan of our dreams. You'll have to get your own fan. <laughs> You can make a homemade evaporative cooler mm -hmm. by placing a towel on a rack. Now this has to be a wet towel mm -hmm. and you place it 12 inches in front of a fan. Mm -hmm. The fan blows the air through the towel and that actually cools and has a cooling effect as it blows on you. Our friends at the Provident Prepper had this tip on their website. Make sure when you go over there, you tell them that Hope and Larry sent you, will you? <laughs> this next tip is something that people honestly don't think enough about, whether there's a power outage or whether there's not a power outage. Staying hydrated. And not only that, staying hydrated with the right liquids. You do not, okay, I'm sorry, Larry, but during a power outage, I don't have he doesn't even have his coffee I don't cup. Have my oh coffee my gosh, today. this is so unusual. <laughs> Usually he's got his coffee with me. Coffee is not the thing you want to be drinking during a power outage. You no. want to be drinking water or even Gatorade in order to make sure that your electrolytes stay balanced because you might be sweating a whole lot, right? And that's why we drink Gatorade after we've exercised to make sure that we replace that salt and that we keep our electrolytes balanced. So if you have Gatorade on hand, that's actually going to be super helpful as well. Another item that you don't want to drink that we read about and Hope, I, Hope and I aren't great consumers of this product, but alcohol. You oh. don't want to drink alcohol, <laughs> no, in, alcohol in, order to stay, in order to stay cool. <laughs> that's, that's not going to work out too well. Another thing that you can do is get a cross breeze going in your house so that you want to open up a window on one side of the room and a window on the other side so you have natural mm -hmm. air blowing through. But now let me say this about that. You want to do that in the early morning when it's cool. Once it gets starting to warm up in the day, you want to shut your windows mm -hmm. all down. You'll want to put car shades in front of your windows in order to block that. Or if you have a blanket or whatever you have. Piece or blackout of, curtains. If yeah, you've blackout got those, curtains. Anything that's going to block that light after maybe about 10 o'clock in the morning or so. Now, we talked about this tip actually in a video that we did on summer electric savings, nine tips for that. So I'm going to make sure that that video is linked in the description of this video and up above. You can also take a cool bath and then air dry. That will keep you cool. Let's talk about food and cooking. The first thing you think of when the power goes out is nobody open the refrigerator or the freezer. That's like, you know, <laughs> as a mother, that's the first thing out of my mouth is nobody touch the refrigerator. Well, this is a, a really great, super easy thing that you can do to keep kids and out of the refrigerator and help them remember because kids forget, right? They forget you just told them 10 minutes ago, don't open the refrigerator. Just take a long piece of masking tape, put it across the handle of both the refrigerator and the freezer. It's not going to harm or mar like the surface of your refrigerator. Put it across there just temporarily in a big X pattern, and that will help kids to remember, don't open the refrigerator. And it will help us to remember not to open the refrigerator too. <laughs> but you probably will need to get in your refrigerator occasionally to get an item out that you mm -hmm. need to cook with. Have things arranged in your refrigerator so you know exactly mm -hmm. where they are so you can get in and get out quickly and not leave that door open. This next tip is something that you'll want to take care of ahead of time. Anytime that a refrigerator or a freezer is full, it actually will stay cooler longer. But a great thing to do is take leftover water bottles, freeze them in the freezer, just put a layer of them in there if you've got enough space. And then as soon as the power goes out, transfer those frozen bottles down to the refrigerator section. And they, as they start to melt and you get condensation on them, that will actually help the interior of your refrigerator to stay cooler, longer. It's almost the same idea as an old fashioned ice box. Eat from your pantry. Make sure that you have a list of meals that are in your pantry that you can just basically open cans and you can eat. Now, the best way to know exactly what is in your pantry is to keep an up-to-date list of what is inside of your pantry. And if you would like some help with stocking or restocking your pantry, super important these days, we actually have a free pantry stock up workbook. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video. All you gotta do is ask. 
If you want to keep the heat down in your house during a power outage, mm -hmm. cook outside. Now, a lot of you probably have a charcoal grill or even a gas grill mm -hmm. out in your backyard. That's a good item to have during a blackout to use for keeping the heat out of your house. That's the idea. You don't want to be heating up the interior of your house during a power outage. The other thing, maybe you have a camp stove like a Coleman. Mm -hmm. Coleman has stoves that use white gas or unleaded gas. So you can actually use the gas, same kind of gas you put in your lawnmower or your car uh, in order to do some cooking outside. The other thing that you can use, and this is an awesome item, and we're gonna roll some video right now of this in, is get a solar cooker. And you can build these. I built one for with the kids several years ago. This is our solar cooker. This is homemade, and uh, we did this for a project that my sons were participating in for a 4-H item. So this is just simply plywood and insulation and then an inner plywood box with sheets of metal and a black tray and then a grill. So why do you want a black tray? Well, you want to be able to attract as much solar as you can and black is a real good color for heat absorption that's why i use black here so i use a roaster this one's black it's great it does absorb this is a pretty small one and uh, so we'll put uh, what do you cook in this hope what do you cook you what's a oh gosh i've done rice i've done vegetables potatoes uh i don't do meat in it of course we don't eat meat but uh, it, it heats to around 250, 275 at the most. Right. So I so, really didn't want to put meat in it. It's like on high so, of, a, uh, of a crock pot. Yeah, so it acts more like a slow cooker or a crock pot. And then this is tempered glass that I, I had cut at a local glass place. Um, and it does have a knob, but I've got to glue the knob back on. So there's where the, <laughs> that's where the knob goes. So this is a mirror and this collects the sun. You do have to keep this rotated throughout the afternoon as you're cooking in it. Uh, and I'm able to change the angle of the mirror by using by just screwing these these bolts in i usually have this bolt on top of the eye bolt so it holds it in case a gust of wind comes it's not going to blow this thing back so got a couple handles uh, on each side here to, in order to carry it and that's really about all there is to it i i built this from a some instructions that i found online simple instructions that i printed out and we built this probably in about an afternoon. Didn't take very long. So uh, I have about uh, $100 in the cooker in parts all together. If you have a portable power station, you can use that to do some cooking also. We have two of them that will supply enough power to run a hot plate or to run a crock pot, for instance. And we, in fact, we can even make coffee on both of ours. So there's so many different things that you can do today than, but then say 20 years ago, these things didn't even exist. I was gonna say, priorities, people, priorities. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Opus, the manufacturer of the portable power stations that we own, actually has a special coupon for you guys. It's a 15% off coupon. That coupon will be listed in the description of this video. Remember, all the products we talk about, they'll be listed there as well. Keep a manual can opener on hand. Another item that you may not immediately think of, make sure that you have a good supply of matches or maybe a lighter on hand or one of those longer lighters. I think mm -hmm. they make them for like barbecue grills, which is probably what you're gonna wanna make sure that you can light either the charcoal or your gas grill, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a supply of those on hand. And we always suggest that you make a list of the items that you have on hand for emergencies. And next to that list, you want another really important column, location. <laughs> Everybody in the house needs to know where each of these items is located. You'll want to have water on hand just in case you lose water supply to your house. Mm -hmm. It's recommended that you have one gallon of water per person per day. Now that's a lot of water it to is. store. But if you can't store that much water, you can do another thing. You can get a water filter. We have an Alexa Pure system that will take about two and a half gallons of water at a time and it will 
purify that water. It'll purify like river water or lake water if you have to go to a lake and get water. And that way your family will have fresh, clean, safe water to drink should you lose your water supply. And we also keep just a couple of cases of bottled water on hand and we keep that with our emergency supplies. We don't really break into that too much. Uh, if we're gonna have a party or something and we feel like we have to buy bottled water, then we're gonna buy that separate. We always try to keep that water in a separate place. Now, we've got you cool. We've got you so that you can cook, but let's talk about another thing. The sun is gonna go down, guys, and you're gonna wanna have lighting. Let's talk about that next. You know, I really think lighting is one of the most important things to consider. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, especially in a storm outage situation, the storms roll through at night. So mm -hmm. you're gonna want flashlights, lanterns, there's all kinds of different lighting possibilities, and we have a plethora of them in our home. Yeah, we've got some to show you. Before we roll into what is recommended, let's talk about what is not recommended. Candles are not recommended. Kerosene lanterns are not recommended. Other gas lanterns are not recommended. Now here's why. Uh, for one thing, of course, there's inherent risk with using all of those, but for another thing, they all give out something you don't want in your house during a summer storm outage, and that is heat. <laughs> so that's why those are absolutely not recommended during summer outages. But there are some products that are recommended that we actually have on hand, and Larry's gonna show them to you. Okay, let's start with the smallest, most practical item first. This is an item that I actually carry on my person all the time. This is an LES 1000 LED rechargeable flashlight, and it is very bright. It runs at about a thousand lumens. It's a wonderful light. You can focus the beam, it'll flash, and it has different settings for brilliance. Another item that we like to have, and we have these in our bathrooms, this, this is an LED switch light. We bought these at Harbor Freight several years ago. This unit has the original batteries in it, and look at that, it works. We have that mounted, uh, like I said, in the bathroom. You can put them in hallways, anywhere where you might just need a quick flip of a switch, maybe to find other items that you're looking for. So those are very practical. Hey, as we go through our list, tell us in the comment section whether you have some of these things and whether you love them as much as we do, especially with young kids. I can't tell you how much we loved having those light switch lights because that's what kids are accustomed to looking for. Mm -hmm. And it was so comforting them to know, oh, look, there's a light switch. It's next to the regular light switch. You just flip it on and it, it just made it feel like there was a sense of normalcy associated with going to the bathroom and walking in and turning the light on. And what's nice about those is you always know where they're at so you don't have to feel mm -hmm. like you need to look for them. They're in one place all the time. Another light source it's good to have is a headlamp. This is one made by Dan Force, and it actually goes right over your head, mounts on it. So when I'm looking for the generator and I'm trying to wheel it around the house and it's pitch dark and there's no lights because we're out of power, I can put this on and I can have my hands free. That's what's really good about it. For biking, this actually has a red light behind it. It's completely rechargeable and it uses these really big, 18650 rechargeable batteries. These are very practical and they're common. And most of my rechargeable lights use this type mm -hmm. of a battery. So I can actually keep some extras charged on hand just, just in case of an emergency. Now remember, in general, any loops are the uh, rechargeable batteries of our choice. We love them. We've had them last for years and years and years, and they will take an awful lot of charges before they start to degrade. Right, they certainly will. This is my favorite of the lanterns, and this is a Tough Light. It, it's a Tough Light 1000 LR. It's actually another 1000 lumen light. Uh, 1000 lumens happens to be my favorite <laughs> amount of light. It puts out, this will fill up a room. That won't be real bright, but it'll be bright enough to read by. And this one has a super long lasting battery. And you can also recharge your other USB items with a USB port on the back. This can run for hours on high. I'll put up in the, in the uh, right here on the video, what, what the specs are on it. It's a great lantern. It's a little pricey, but it's well made and it's well designed. I think it's the best one out there. And if you want like double the light source, here's a reminder. 
take that lantern, put it in front of any reflective source. A mirror is perfect and it will actually magnify that light back out into the room and it will actually, it'll make it so that the light is magnified. Another light that I have on order, I haven't gotten it in yet, is a, it's like a USB rechargeable bulb and uh, it, it hangs and then it's about seven watts and it can run off of a USB power source as well. So those are kind of handy. They use them a lot for tent camping inside of a tent, but those could be hung anywhere in a home. We have some other precautions and some other suggestions we really want to give you. These did not fit under any of our other categories, like keeping cool and cooking and light sources. These are extras we wanted to make sure that we threw your way. You want to protect your electronics. If you're, especially during a storm situation, I would recommend unplugging any sensitive items. Make sure they're on a power strip that has the, that protective circuit in it. Those are things you need to consider. For rolling blackouts, you want to make sure you keep your computer files backed up, especially if you have a desktop computer that's plugged in mm -hmm. and it's running off of that power. Now, your laptop might be okay because you're running on, your battery will kick in even if it's plugged in, so you'll be pretty safe there. But you got to make sure that anything that you have that's electronic is protected. Here's something else that you may not think about. Make sure, especially now, and we are we are like huge on this. And so we have like a son who drives my car all the time. And we're like, we're telling him this all the time. Make sure that that gas tank doesn't go below three quarters of a tank. Make sure that your tank is topped off right now. And one of the reasons for that is because if it's a general like huge power outage in a big area, gas pumps won't work without power. You will be unable to put any gasoline in the car because they simply won't work. So making sure that they're pretty filled all the time is super important. Another item that we have that we've talked about on a previous video is an emergency radio. These are really nice to have. I actually use this one all the time. It has so many different features. It has a built-in weather radio. It has short wave. The short wave works really good on it. It's very sensitive. Uh, in fact, Hope can link the video where I demonstrate this. I have it pulling in short wave stations. I have it pulling in AM radio stations from all over the United States. It's got a very sensitive tuner. It also has a built-in light uh, on the on the back of it. Um, let me see if I can get it lit up. There it is. So you, you got a built-in reading light. Um, there's another light for for uh, uh, seeing with. It's just a little flashlight. It's not particularly bright, but it would work in an emergency situation. So uh, it hand cranks. It's got a crank on it. And so you, you wind it up in case the batteries are out of power. It has built-in NICAD batteries, but you can also put in your own rechargeable AA batteries to supply power. So there's two different power sources in the back. In addition to that, you can plug this radio into a USB battery bank. It has that mini USB port on it as well, so you can run this off of those. It is a very nice radio to have because if you're out of power, one of the things that you want is some form of communication so you can hear what's going on. Remember, there'll be links to everything that we are discussing in this video in the description of the video. Now, if you're interested more in backup power sources, including portable power stations, Larry is going to do an in-depth review on the Opus 1800 watt unit that we just, uh, just got a few months ago. We've been using it, we love it. There are some things that it will power that the 1200 watt unit would not. So he's gonna do a review on that. That's coming your way on Monday. So make sure you're looking for that video. Look, if you're not subscribed, this is a great reason to subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you don't miss any of our great content that is coming your way. And make sure to like the video if you like it. Remember, this was part two of our two-part video series on how to survive summer power outages. Part one is linked right over there, and it is all about backup power.